President Ekufuado has for the first time admitted that he was constrained in naming the successor to former Auditor General, uh, primarily due to the circumstances that led to his exit. The President, in March this year, directed the Auditor General, Daniel Domelevo, to proceed on retirement. President Ekufuado, who has been speaking to corruption-related issues, says the country is still paying the for the circumstances that led to the retirement of Daniel Domlevo. Presidential correspondent Elton Brobe now reports. Let's start with the audit service. And President Ekufuado has commended the acting Auditor General, Johnson Ekufuado, for his work in the fight against corruption since his appointment. Interacting with the anti-corruption coalition, President Ekufuado said Mr. Johnson Ekufuado has demonstrated the quality of work and independence of view so far. For him, those are clear indications of his professionalism and readiness to fight corruption. I think we're all aware of the circumstances in which the first auditor, when I say the first, the first auditor general in my time left office. It seemed to presage some disputation between him and my government, between him and myself. And somebody had to act in his place. I felt that it was important that that person should be given sufficient time to develop the confidence of the population, rather than to rush to an appointment which may, which could also have given the impression that that is the reason why we acted against the first auditor general, to remove him from office and plant somebody perhaps more pliant or more accessible. I believe the one who has succeeded him, who came to succeed him by natural order in, 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 in the hierarchy there, has not demonstrated sufficient quality, independence of view. For instance, he's responsible for something that is unheard of in our history, the 12 statutory reports that have to be compiled and placed before Parliament in the year of Parliament. This is the first time it has ever been done. Even the much touted Auditor General before never managed to do it. This one has done it. Ghana improved her score on the latest Corruption Perception Index. The 2020 report released by Transparency International saw the country score 43 points out of a possible 100, a two-point increase from the 2019 14 points. Despite the high level of perception in the country, President Kufaro said he has done more in resourcing anti graft agencies than any other regime. While for some civil society organizations demanding the president attend to alleged corrupt practices involving some of his appointees, he has this response for you. The highly politicized atmosphere in which many of these allegations are raised in Ghana, in which some of even some, some of the civil society organizations are... are are privy to and complicit in, where it is, it is, it's the line between them being independent commentary and being politically related commentary is very, very thin. And in many, many cases, there are lines that are, in fact, crossed. There are civil society organizations that mounted campaigns to make sure that I did not continue to sit in this seat. I, I cannot overlook that when I hear them continuing to attack my government and its works, that these were not people who were in any way either objective or sympathetic to what I was doing. So if I tend not to pay too much attention to what they say, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, for myself, I think that uh, a lot of objective people will, can, will appreciate the point of the position that I, that I take. On the Founders' Day, which fell on the 4th of August, thousands of Ghanaians took to the streets of Accra under the Fix the Country banner, demanding, among others, a review of the 1992 Constitution. But will this happen? There are people around this table, Mr. Dr. Akwete is one of them, who know about my attitude to the effort that the, the, one of my predecessors, the late Professor Mills, made to um, revise the Constitution. I never agreed with the methods by which the, the whole undertaking was taken. I don't believe that the Constitution is the work of the President of the Republic. Having regard to the difficulties that our country has had to arrive at a, a multi-party constitutional dispensation that has endured, 
And the Fourth Republic is the one that has endured. We saw the First Republic, which had its own problems, authoritarian rule, one-party rule. We had the problems of the Second Republic. We had the problems involved in the Third Republic, all of which were short-lived. To have a republic that has lasted nearly 30 years in the context of our history, to change the constitutional arrangements that have assisted this durability, we should be very careful how we go about it. I feel very strongly on, on that point, and that is why I have not lent my support to the idea of this wholesale review of the Constitution. The one area which I felt required action was the one that I put before the country, which was the extension of multi-party democratic rule to local governments. Elton Brobe for Joy News.